Coming off the video of finding the unsuspecting league winning tight ends in 2024 fantasy football, I feel pretty motivated to rank the top 12 tight end rankings for 2024 fantasy football and we're comparing those rankings today compared to expert consensus rankings on fantasy pros as well. So go down there and drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel to show your support. So the first three guys here are all in the same tier because I believe we are truly in uncharted territory and all three of these guys could very well be the tight end one. Sam Laporta at one, Travis Kelsey at two, and Mark Andrews at three. Here's the deal. When you look at Sam Laporta and what he did last year as a rookie, unprecedented, literally historic season from a rookie tight end. He was immediately super important in that Detroit Lions offense. And the thing you have to love about Sam Laporta coming into this year is he's coming into the same year with the same coaching staff, with the same quarterback. There was no big changes there that could possibly affect the volume or the level of importance in the offense. It's all on him in year two, and I actually like him to grow even more in year two, as I think most people do. But I could easily see Travis Kelsey or Mark Andrews being that tight end one. I think it just simply has to be acknowledged. With Travis Kelsey, last year I was really not into drafting him a fantasy. I took a lot of flack for it at the time. I actually ended up being right about that. But here's what we did see with Travis Kelsey in the playoffs. We saw him be that dude for the Kansas City Chiefs all, all the way to the Super Bowl, and when they won the Super Bowl, he was a major factor in that effort. So he's not, he's not done, right? He could very well be in the stage of his career where, like some players, maybe not the star anymore, but since he has Hall of Fame talent and he has Hall of Fame experience, he is just kind of a for the end type of guy. Now, in a best ball format, that's a fantastic draft pick to get, assuming that he plays well the last several weeks in fantasy football, but I don't know how well he'll be throughout the entire duration of the season. And that's my problem with Kelsey. And then with Mark Andrews, I think it's all just an injury thing. You look at what he did last year on a per game basis, he was a very good tight end option. He was very well within the range of finishing as the tight end one before he went down with injury because Kelsey was falling and Laporta came out of nowhere. Mark Andrews could very well be the tight end one as long as he stays healthy. And I think that Isaiah likely will be more involved in three tight end sets this year, but I really do believe that Mark Andrews, as long as he's healthy, absolutely could be a number one tight end this year. Number four and five, Trey McBride and George Kittle here. Now, expert consensus rankings, I'm all in accordance with all those guys so far. First five, I'm in exact accordance with expert consensus rankings. So there's really no big disagreement here. Now, with Trey McBride, I think it's just a simple fact of him being like a Dalton Kincaid guy, which is that he came in towards the back half of last year when they finally decided we're done with Zach Ertz, and he just became a rocket ship for the Cardinals. Now, there are changes with him in particular. The change with Trey McBride is that there really wasn't a solid tight end wide receiver one option in Arizona. Well, that changes with Marvin Harrison Jr., also, the first half of the season, he didn't have Kyler Murray. So, what if we apply a full season of Kyler Murray with the target competition that will be coming with Mark? It doesn't really move the needle for me in a bad way with Trey McBride because there's it's not like there's two wide receivers who are going to be 100 plus guys. You'll have Marvin and then you'll have McBride as the second best option out of that pass catching group. So I just think that with Kyler Murray, a full season with him, and honestly help with Marvin Harris Jr., I think Trey McBride, probably not going to be the tight end one in fantasy, but definitely could easily be a top three guy. And then with George Kittle here, I've got to put him over a couple guys that you may disagree with, and we'll get into those guys here in a minute. But I think with George Kittle, what we know about him is that he's not slowing down. Now, obviously, Travis Kelsey, like, he he slowed down without any warning because he came off in one of his best seasons, if not his best, in fantasy football, and then he just dropped off. But George Kittle is, I don't believe, there because the offense is so well run, similar to Kansas City. And if he does drop off this year, he's past the age of 30, so it's like if it happens, it happens. I'm not going to bank on it because we know how great he's been over the last decade, basically. So I'm just going to continue to ride this train with George Kittle, very similarly to how many of us did with Travis Kelsey. Dalton Kincaid at number six. 
He's number seven in expert consensus rankings. And I actually was and I was planning on explaining why I had him below expert consensus rankings until I saw that I was actually above. And I think that George Kittle, the reason I put him over him is because I have I've been on this for over a year now. The problem with Dalton Kincaid is that he's got a $50 million tight end in that tight end room with Dawson Knox. Am I saying that Dawson Knox is going to be the tight end one over Kincaid? No, I'm not saying that. They spent first round capital on Kincaid. So you know for a fact they're going to get Kincaid involved in this offense more so than they did at the beginning of the year. It'll be very much like the back half of the year. And when Dawson Knox was gone for 2023, for the duration of 2024. Joe Brady knows he's going to use Dalton Kincaid a ton. But I still do say this. Like, with Dalton Kincaid, I don't see the world where Dawson Knox is just nothing. Like, he's not a $50 million whale that's going to sit on the t on the sidelines. I just don't see that. And I think it's irresponsible if we plan on that with Dalton Kincaid. So I think his upside will be capped because they will get Dawson Knox involved because he, again is a $50 million tight end, and that should not be overlooked in this scenario. Seven and eight, I've got Evan Ingram and Jake Ferguson here. Now with Evan Ingram, I've got him three spots above expert consensus rankings, and Jake Ferguson, I've got him one spot above expert consensus ranking. Now with Evan Ingram in particular, I think this is actually a very interesting case right here because Evan Ingram is 30 years old, right? Evan Ingram is technically like at that limit where you don't really want to highly invest in a tight end. Good thing is, separate from that, his draft price on underdog right now, very, very good. I would advise drafting him today using code FFN to get a first time deposit match up to $100 and $250 in bonus cash as well. Go use that to draft Evan Ingram because I went through the video a couple days ago trying to find unsuspecting value league winning tight ends in 2024 fantasy football. And I went through the history of all these guys that have been 160 plus fantasy point scorers at the tight end position over the years. And Evan Ingram last year was the only one over the last 10 seasons that averaged less than 10 yards per reception. Now, I'm not, that's not a good thing. Like that's, it's not good to be an outlier in that sense right there. What we can count on is the target share. Dude had 140 plus targets in 2023. I don't see those targets going anywhere in 2024. Like they drafted Brian Robinson, Brian Thomas, and Brian Thomas is a deep threat. He's he's still a raw guy, similar to Gabe Davis. So it's going to be Christian McCa Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram fighting for targets. So I just really don't see his target share going away. And all we really need to even further maximize Evan Ingram's fantasy upside is for Trevor Lawrence to improve and get him the ball in the red zone. And I think it could happen. So I think his finish actually could be probably around the tight end five. Jake Ferguson, I think it's everybody's favorite value in underdog right now. At the tight end position, I don't think there's a better value than Jake Ferguson. Jake Ferguson not only is coming off a really good year. He was really involved last year, 100 plus targets. Looks to be involved like that again because they did not get another wide receiver to pair with C.D. Lamb. So right now, they're banking on Brandon Cooks and Jalen Tolbert. <laughs> Jake Ferguson's going to be that best option. Add on top of the fact, Dak Prescott loves a good tight end. Loves a good tight end. So Jake Ferguson, I think there's only arrows pointing up for Jake Ferguson. And again, I think everybody acknowledges that, which is why it kind of makes me wonder like why they have him at 9 instead of 8, but it's really not that big of a difference. Jake Ferguson, easily top 10 tight end this year, as long as he's healthy. Number nine, Kyle Pitts' last stand. I have him three spots below expert consensus rankings. They've got him at number six. Like I said, this is his last stand. It's his fourth year he's coming into, and I'm not going to blame him for the issues that he's had with the quarterbacks, right? Like, I'm not going to blame him for the, the quarterback issues and even the offensive coaching issues. With Kyle Pitts, though, like, this is the most talented tight end prospect that we had seen in possibly ever. And it just, there really hasn't been much to show for it outside of his rookie season. So, with Kirk Cousins, without Arthur Smith, 
Can he be a top 10 guy or top five guy? I think he can be, but I'm gonna err on the side of caution before I overzealously rank him as a top five guy because we simply have not seen it from Kyle Pitts since his rookie season. David and Joku at 10 and Dallas Goddard at 11. Now, I actually was interested to see that I had David and Joku two spots below expert consensus rankings. They've got him at number eight. With Njoku, I've got no issue at all. Like, I like David Njoku. I, I've drafted him a bunch on Underdog. We'll continue to do that. And I've got him in a Dynasty League as well. Like, I, I actually like David Njoku. And I think he's a great redraft pick as well. With David Njoku, there's really no issues that I could point out. I could easily see him being a top eight to seven tight end. I think that I think that what the shortcoming is with with him as, compa as compared to like a Kyle Pitts is that I think that Kyle Pitts has more volatility for big plays at this stage of his career. And with a quarterback upgrade, I like the idea of getting that big play upside actually hitting this year with a better quarterback. I don't trust Deshaun Watson. And whether it's Deshaun Watson or Jameis Winston, that's the quarterback. I think there's just limitations there that David Njoku will see. So I don't think that it's touchdown upside. It's probably as high as Kyle Pitts. Dallas Goddard at 11. I. What's interesting about him is when I was going through that video about the tight ends a couple days ago, Dallas Goddard was really had every benchmark to hit for a guy who finishes a top five tight end this year. The only problem that he saw last year was that he just didn't find the end zone. Touchdowns are not a sticky stat. We cannot rely on touchdowns going into the next year to rank the players in fantasy football. So if he gets the same amount of targets and starts to get more touchdowns, I actually have him ranked too low. Now the problem that I have, and the reason he's lower, is because he's older. Dallas Goddard is an older player. He's basically 30 years old, and has not exactly been the healthiest guy over the last couple of years. So there's room for error here with Dallas Goddard, but I do acknowledge upsides there. Rounding it out at 12. Is it Pat Fryermuth? No. Is it Dalton, Sh Dalton Schultz? No. Is it TJ Hawkinson? No. I've got Luke Musgrave. Luke Musgrave of the Green Bay Packers. Number 17 expert consensus ranking. Underdogs got him at the same spot. Tight end 12. Or tight end 17. Luke Musgrave, I'm not confident in him being a top 12 guy. I like his upside because of the offense he's on with the coach he's got, with the quarterback that he's got, and the weapons around him never going to make him see double coverage. Is it possible that Tucker Craft, the second tight end, is going to be involved? Absolutely. But Tucker Craft is injured right now with a pec injury and is looked to be out until training camp at least. So with a guy who's already in the tight end one category for Green Bay, with that second tight end injured, the chances that he pulls away are actually not, not under 50%, I don't think. And let's just look at the other guys that expert consensus rankings has ranked above Luke Musgrave here. So who they've got is Cole Komet, who is seeing not only one, but two wide receiver targets entering that Chicago Bears wide receiver room. And they're both alphas, Keenan Allen and Romo Dunze with top 10 draft capital. I don't see his target share being there. TJ Hawkinson, there's no timetable for a return right now. For all we know, Duke could come back mid-season. And if that happens, unlikely he finishes the top 12 tight end. Very, very unlikely. Pat Fryermuth, what has you what have you seen that would make you think Pat Fryermuth will be a top 12 guy when the offense looks the exact same with quarterback issues? And Pat Fryermuth had one of the worst drop rates out of any tight end last year. And Dalton Schultz and Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers, rookie tight end, I'm not going to bank on the side of Sam Laporta being the new norm. And Dalton Schultz, again, similar to Cole Komet, more target competition. I'm taking the guy that looked good on his targets last year, is in an emerging offense, and made no additions to any kind of pass catching options in that room. So let me know what you think of the rankings in the comments below and who your guy is at tight end in 2024 fantasy football.